Blue Chew is making waves by bringing more confidence to the bedroom with their chewable tablets that will help you last longer and stay stronger in bed. Does this sound too good to be true? Well, guess what? You can try it for free. Just pay $5 in shipping by going to bluechew.com and entering code HOLLY to get your first month subscription. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, I have the one and only Kendra Sunderland. Kendra, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Look, I got all dressed up for you. I wore a blazer. I put fake eyelashes on, which I've never done before, and I'm a little iffy on how they look. But um, amazing. I look like I just rolled out of bed. Yeah, but you are young and beautiful. You can roll out of bed and still look amazing. It takes me quite quite a bit of work to look halfway decent. So I am jealous. Your um, boobs especially look fantastic. But I know I normally put them out there just so like it distracts from like my face and everything. <laughs> so I'm like, as long as I have amazing cleavage, I feel like it just makes you look better. This is true. And you do have amazing cleavage and you have amazing natural cleavage, which Bless. have you always like, just what is it like going through life with like huge, perfect breasts? I just want to know. <laughs> it's a lot harder than people think. I mean, these things are very heavy. I got to carry them around all the time. My posture is just crap. So I'm pretty sure when I'm older, I'm going to be like, hunchback like old lady with boobs down to my knees probably you know I two of my really really good friends when I first started shooting were Jelena Jensen and Aria Giovanni and they both have huge natural boobs and yeah same thing they always complained about their back um they always complained about being able to find clothes that fit them Mm -hmm. because having a small body and big boobs is a really hard to like find and even if you just wear a big t-shirt it just kind of makes you look fat because your boobs are so huge that it creates like all this space so yeah I'm like as long as my nipples are covered then we're good the whole rest of the boob like I don't care about (laughs) (laughs) so Kendra um as I mentioned previously in our little introduction I know you've told the story a million times but it is kind of how the world got to know you. Can you tell us your story about how you got into the porn industry? Yeah, so I was 19 years old, going to college at Oregon State University, go Beavs. (laughs) Um, I just was like in my second year of college and I just got tired of being broke. So I was like, no place would hire me for a job. So I just like, someone had told me about webcamming and thought that I could make a good amount of money on there. And so I tried it out and I think like within my first week of webcamming, all my viewers were like, you should go someplace public, like Starbucks or something. You'd probably get a lot more viewers and more money. I was like, everyone's going to see me pull my titties out at a Starbucks. Like, and I don't want to be banned from Starbucks. So the library was just like the closest thing to me. So I just went there and did a webcam show. And then um, like a couple months later, I guess. I I like stopped lying to people about my job. I was telling the truth. I dropped out of school. And then um, I think one of the frat guys at the frat that I used to go party at, like found the video online under my um, webcam name. And then they posted it on Pornhub with my legal name. It's like Kendra Sunderland masturbates in Oregon State Library. And then it was just like, it blew up over the weekend, like in the college town. And just everywhere, like, in the Oregon news. And I guess, like, people said I was in, like, newspapers around the world and stuff like that. So it just kind of blew up out of nowhere. And that's how I got into everything. I was doing, like, conventions and feature dancing for years and then decided to actually do, like, adult films um, a couple years ago. So it's been, like, five or six years. It's crazy. Time flies so fast. It does, doesn't it? 
Um, tell me a little bit about how did you manage to do a webcam show in the library? Because libraries are places that you're supposed to be quiet. And I'm just curious how you pulled that off because people didn't find out until after it was posted online. So nobody knew you were doing it at the time, right? Yeah, I don't think so. I was just like, I went to the top floor because it's like the quiet floor. So there's not a lot of people up there because you can't talk at all. So I just found like a corner of the library where I could like see behind me and I could see around the corner. So I just like set up there and I really wasn't like, I was just like teasing and stuff like that. I wasn't doing anything crazy. And so I was just being quiet, but I feel like somebody eventually kind of knew because they would like walk by a couple of times and then like came and sat kind of like behind me. And so then I was like, all right, I'm going to go into the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom and then like all these girls started coming in the bathroom and like pooping. And so it just smelled so <laughs> bad. So I left the bathroom and I was like, I'm just done here. Like, guys, this is this is it. But it was pretty like a thrilling experience. But I thought I was pretty stealthy. What do you think it is? Because the public nudity and like sex in public places thing is a big um, taboo and it's a big fetish. There's a lot of people who who do those kinds of videos and they do extremely well. And there's been a lot of like blowback from content platforms. I know OnlyFans has banned it recently. Mm -hmm. Um, So what do you think the draw is? Like, why are people so obsessed with this like public nudity, public space kind of scene? I feel like it's probably just like the idea of getting caught. I feel like it's a lot hotter when you like, don't know if you're going to get caught or you don't know who's going to see you. And then I feel like for on like the viewer side, I think it's hot because like imagine you're just like at the park, just like a normal day. And then you see some girl just like fingering herself or something. You're like, wow, like the idea of me just being able to walk up and see this or like see it in public on accident, I think just like turns people on, I guess. Mm. I like Cause it. it's, <laughs> yeah. Cause it's like taboo and it's not supposed to happen. And people love things yeah. that are taboo. I mean, we know that exactly. for a fact. <laughs> what about like in your personal life? Have you ever had like sex in a public place that you didn't film? That was very memorable. I mean, yeah, I've, I've, yeah, I've always kind of been like that. I feel like in high school, my high school boyfriend, one time it was like dressing rooms at places, which is like so obvious when you both go in at the same time. And you're um, either going in there to have sex or you're going in there to do blow. It's like one of the two. (laughs) Like none of this is honorable, but (laughs) I'm just like, I guess that was it. And then I don't know, I guess out in public or sometimes like in a hotel room where it's like all glass and you feel like people can see you. Mm. Just something about it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So after you blew up, um, you first you were a contract star with Greg Lansky, right? Mm-hmm. Was it specifically? Was it just Vixen at the time? Because I know that's like several different brands, kind of like how Mind Geek is. Were you like yeah. a Vixen contract girl? Is that what they called you? Yeah, I was on contract for Vixen, or Vixen Angel, and Vixen Angel of the Year. Like the first one for those so I think that a lot of the branded stuff was built off of like me and like how I carry myself and um it was just it was great to start out with I wanted something like I wanted my first scene to be a huge deal because it was a big deal to me to cross over I think for years I was like I'm never gonna do movies and stuff like that and I genuinely felt like that but then I changed my mind and I was like you know what I do want to explore this part of the industry and my sex life and everything. And so I just thought it was like great. I've always been on contract, so I don't know anything else other than that. I've been very lucky in that aspect. So I'm grateful. What made you change your mind? Like what were some of the thought processes that led you to do that? Um, If I'm being honest, I was under the impression that I was going to get penthouse pet of the year. Mm. So I was kind of like, you know what, that'll be my next step in my career. It'll be great. We'll be doing things like that. And then I kind of found out that I didn't get it. And so I was just like, I don't know what to do with myself now in my career. I feel like I hit a plateau as far as like traveling for conventions and stuff like that. And as far as like my career, like what the people I was reaching. And so I was just like, I feel like 
that could be the next step into doing that. And Greg had contacted me wanting me to do my first scene for him. And it just all kind of like fell into place. Like I shot for Vixen twice and then I was put on contract and then I shot my movie for Blacked, which was like a huge point in my career. Cause I feel like a lot of people see me now as like, you know, like a performer that does interracial and stuff like that, even though it's not necessarily like as okay today at that mm-hmm. time, it was kind of more of a big deal. And I feel like I have a huge following that enjoys watching that and stuff because like my third scene I've ever done was for black so it's like I didn't hold off and I didn't wait I just did it because I wanted to do it and I didn't see the difference between that and a regular scene with a white person you know yeah so for anybody who's kind of new to my podcast we've discussed this a lot with uh interracial and you know whether or not the porn industry is racist how girls would sometimes wait to have sex with a black man until later in their career it was considered a next step like anal or something like that and then they would command this really high rate for it so there's been a lot of controversy around that so it's like you're kind of shedding that idea that it's like this step in your career that you know somebody has to wait for or charge more for or make like a big deal out of it basically that it's a taboo thing Yeah, I feel like before I started, like, it was a lot more acceptable. And I don't feel like the porn industry is to blame. I feel like it's the fans. Like, Mm -hmm. it's also not our fault that, like, stepbrother, stepsister is such a thing. Like, it's the fans wanting to see that. And it's unfortunate that, like, a lot of people want to see that. But that's just the way that it is. Like, that's what they want to see. And so I feel like before it was a lot more acceptable to, like, market it as your first IR and like take a bigger rate even though I personally believe like that was never acceptable because like what's the difference like people want to say that oh they have bigger dicks but really like I've worked with a lot of white guys that have big dicks as well and it's like just as tiring or just as hard on my body so I when I was like approached about it I didn't want to take a bigger pay I felt like that was unfair and unright to do And I feel like I kind of did that right as it was starting to turn into like not as acceptable. And now it's like really not acceptable. Like I can't imagine anyone like marketing their first IR in this like this age, you know, because it's like everything that's going on with Black Lives Matter movement and everything. It's just not okay anymore. And I feel like it was really important to me not to take a bigger pay and to take a stand and like show that it's just like shooting any other regular scene and that I'm really glad that I went with blacked because I didn't want to do something like dog fart or something where it's like, Oh, everyone, I put my phone on do not disturb. I was like, I don't want to do something like that where it's show like portraying them in a bad way or something. I'm really glad that I went with blacked where they would portray the black actors as strong, powerful men with like, really great jobs or really high positions and I thought that that was really important to like not be as like cliche with the old way that people used to do IR yeah like the bad stereotypes I mean I know that there's been some people who don't who are against blacked and against you know the idea that it fetishizes performers but you do have to say that it is the first Honestly, the first time someone took interracial and portrayed um, the black actors in a strong role, like you said, and made it beautiful and cinematic and like just really, really well done. So, so how was, let's go back to talking about your first scene. What was your very first scene like and who was that with? Um, So it was a boy girl with Mick Blue and um, it won an AVN award for best boy girl, which was super crazy because my first scene ever and I like won an award and I was like, holy crap, I can't believe all this is happening. But I was really proud of it. I I mean, I look back and I'm like, wow, I look like (laughs) I look so much younger. Like I was so naive at that time. Like I just feel like I look totally different, but I really liked the scene. I felt like it was so important for me and Greg to make it something big and make it classy we had like drone shots in there it was just such a big deal for me and everyone on set made me feel super comfortable I just remember like 
not having any bad experience at all. I mean, I'm extremely lucky. Like I haven't had a bad experience on set in my first scene. Like I was totally comfortable, like amazed with like the, the scene that we produced and everything. I loved all of it. And it was just great. I just remember being like, wow, this is really like fun to do. And like, I liked the whole process of taking pretty girls and getting your hair and makeup done and doing everything. So I just kind of like fell in love with it at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Mick Blue's a great performer to start with too. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a veteran and he's, he's a pro. So it's a great first person to have your experience with. Um, and I think, yeah, you, it sounds like you've been really lucky in terms of the companies that you've been in to contract with. I mean, obviously, you know, they put, put a lot of thought and care into what your scenes were going to be. And now you're contracted with Brazzers, which has allowed me to shoot you a couple of times. Um, the first time we shot was your Twisties Treat of the Month, which I remember they were like, this is a big deal. You better... <laughs> make sure this is a good scene they were like on my ass about that they're like you need to make sure like they were like we know that you normally treat all of your girls really well and you treat them all you know like princesses but kendra's really important so make sure you really treat her like a princess and i was like okay okay (laughs) jesus christ i really was like a princess that day too i was like playing this dark princess i thought it was so dope yeah, but um, I guys were like so worried because like the latex was so tight. I was like losing yeah. feeling in my hands, and like the end part, we were outside in the cold. And everyone has like sweaters and sweats on, and I'm like practically naked in the pool. Like it was just such a good experience. So when I think of it, like I don't think about those things. I think about just I was like so proud of everything we were doing, and it was so different than anything I'd ever done before. I'm so happy to hear that because it it was funny, you know, after they gave me that speech and then it's freezing out and I make you get, to be fair, the water was heat and we put you in a jacuzzi, but we put you outside and it was so fucking cold and I felt terrible. I was like, this, Kendra's going to hate me. She's going to hate me. It's so cold out. I felt terrible. You were such a trooper though. Like you did not complain at all. I complained more than you did. And like you said, I was in like a sweater and a jacket and a scarf. And I bitched about the cold more than you did. You were like, you were amazing, honestly. Thank you. I try really hard not to complain on set or anything and just make the most out of it. I was really excited about everything we were doing. So I think that that helped me have like a good attitude about it. Like I was just so excited to see everything that we were doing. Yeah. It was a a great day. And the last time we shot together was freaking awesome as well. I know it was hot. It was like the opposite. I got sunburned. So it's like either one way or the other, either I'm cold or I'm sunburned. I know. know. And remember, because when I shot you, um, when I shot you for two of the month, I'm like, Kendra, I swear the next time it's going to be inside. It's going to be on a bed. It's going to be really comfortable. And then I was like, just kidding. It's outside on a mirror in the sun. And it was really windy. It was a great time, though. I definitely, I mean, I should have known not to spend so much time in the sun, but I was, like, so warm, and it was such a nice day, so I loved it. To be fair, I also should have given you sunscreen. Like, that was my bad. Um, so, yeah, so she was wearing, so, guys, she was wearing, like, this bodysuit with, like, this cool, like, cross pattern in the front, and then, like, finally, when we get to sex, and we get inside the tent, and you take it off, I was like, oh, my God, it was, like, sunburned in that, like, weird pattern of that body suit I was like fuck there's nothing I could do about it it was too late yeah it's like it's not it always gets worse too it's like I got home and I looked in the mirror I was like damn I'm really sunburned it was like by the time we got to shooting it was getting bad too it was like super bright red (laughs) yeah yeah sorry I probably gave you some weird tan lines it's okay I went to Hawaii afterwards so I like evened out my tan lines oh okay okay I feel better now (laughs) (laughs) all right guys hang tight we're gonna take a quick commercial break we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about Kendra's new magazine venture so hold on tight Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Blue Chew Blue Chew is making waves by bringing more confidence to the bedroom with their chewable tablets that will help you last longer and stay stronger in bed. And the best thing about Blue Chew is you don't have to go to a doctor to get your prescription. It's all done online, discreetly in the privacy of your own home. 
That means you don't have to go and sit in an awkward appointment. You don't have to stand in line at the pharmacy. You will have a licensed technician who will find the perfect prescription strength for you, and you will have it shipped discreetly to your door. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, and after you get approved by one of their licensed medical technicians, you will have your own supply of bluechew.com tablets shipped discreetly to your door. Does this sound too good to be true? Well, guess what? You can try it for free. Just pay $5 in shipping by going to bluechew.com and entering code HOLLY to get your first month subscription. Blue Chew is going to change your sex life by bringing you that added confidence in the bedroom that you've been missing. And we are back. So Kendra, you are coming out with a magazine, correct? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I um, I was wanting to do like a digital magazine, something new where I could kind of like be creative, but it wasn't necessarily like porn or scenes like that. And so I was thinking of like doing a digital magazine. And at first I was kind of like, maybe I should like call it pink or have it be like something that's super Kendra. And then I was like, I can only go so far with that. I kind of wanted to give people something I knew that everyone would like. And so I kind of had this idea of like doing a super raunchy, like sex, drugs, and money type thing where I feel like everybody loves like at least one of those things, if not all three. So I kind of had that idea and I just kind of went with that. I was looking at a lot of different references and pictures online of just super raunchy out there crazy things of people just like doing drugs and like having sex and kind of like old school tumblr vibes was kind of where Mm. I was going with that so um I just released it it's called smd magazine it stands for sex money drugs but it can stand for anything you want like suck my dick or whatever but um (laughs) I love it I think it's great the first issue was really kind of like centered to me it's we're going to branch out and do a lot of crazy different things but at first I kind of wanted to show people like me in a different way so it's like me in my house like partying and stuff like that and me running around LA naked and like I took pictures at an in and out which was crazy to me because I um I was like, I just really, really want to do this. I feel like public nudity is a lot of my brand and stuff like that, or not following the rules or doing whatever I want is a lot of my brand. So I really wanted to just run around LA naked. And um, then we did like a cool 70s type like drug lord vibes. And I just, I'm so proud of all of it. We also have two articles in there. So We wrote about psilocybin research in Oregon, which is important to me because I'm from Oregon and they just um, passed a lot of laws about, you know, decriminalizing drugs and um, legalizing mushrooms for medical purposes. And I feel like a lot of people don't really understand why or how like mushrooms could really change your life. But if it's been proven that microdosing can really change your outlook on life and Um, anything like it can solve a lot of things so I wanted to write about that and then we wrote about my Instagram getting deleted and like my famous live that I did to get my Instagram deleted and yes tell us tell us about that story I don't want to skim over that because um (laughs) you were talking about that on set right like didn't we shoot you right after your Instagram got deleted for that yeah it's been It was crazy. I just, it's a hundred percent my fault. I will take blame. I do. I did want to talk and write about discrimination that I feel that sex workers are facing on social medias. And even though me getting my Instagram deleted was a hundred percent my fault, a drunken mistake, I still stand by that we get discriminated on and it's unfair. So I don't know, just one day I was at my friend Kirill's warehouse. He owns the company Assholes Live Forever. So we always just do crazy stuff and take dope pictures together. And I was just like in a, like a phase of liking to shotgun white claws. And so <laughs> I think I shotgun like five or six because we were doing cool videos with it. And I was just so drunk. I just got on Instagram live and I kind of was like, had this mindset that I was invincible. I could do whatever I want. I was very intoxicated. Like I wouldn't have done this if I was sober, 
but I basically just like pulled my titties out. I had my top up the entire time and I was like deep throating their like giant black dildo and I had them pour like white claw down the dildo into my mouth and it was just so bad and embarrassing. And then me being drunk, like I posted it to Instagram TV afterwards. I went on my story and I was like, guys, like I'm still here. Like I may be fucking the CEO of Instagram. Like I'm here to stay. And the next day I woke up, I was deleted. And everyone was like, I know a lot of people celebrated me getting deleted or like felt like I deserved it. And I definitely did. But I feel like everything that I was posting up until then, like pictures where you could see my nipples and stuff, I genuinely felt like I was fighting for something like nipple equality. Like I don't find it fair that guys can just post shirtless pictures and like girls can't do the same or post like artistic kind of nude photos. So I kind of just felt like that was unfair. And I know that Instagram like can put like confirm that you're 18 and older on people's pages. So I'm like, why can't you do that for us instead of just deleting everything? And then at this point, it's like it's random things get deleted. Like I've had a story of my dinner get deleted. It's like who's actually I don't feel like a real person is actually checking these things. Mm. And a lot of my posts now get deleted for spam, which I don't even know what that means. Like, how is this spam? So it's really, really frustrating. And I definitely wanted to talk about that in the magazine that I feel like we do get discriminated on. I see a lot of really popular models and Instagram models post, like, basically nude photos or get away with more than we're allowed to get away with. And on TikTok, I get a lot of TikToks taken down. I see other people doing the exact same trends. So it's just very, very frustrating. And it's like, there's nothing you can do. You just have to press, like, accept and next and then it's like your page may be deleted and it's like okay like thanks <laughs> just keep going on about my day but it's very scary I spent a long I spent years building up that account I had two million followers I was verified um but Instagram had to release a statement basically saying I wasn't getting any preferable treatment because people really thought I was fucking the CEO and that's how I got away with things but to me it was always such a joke that I thought people would understand it was a joke, but there was like news articles that came out like Kendra Sunderland, Instagram deleted uh, claims she's sleeping with CEO and all these things. And it was just such a big mess. (laughs) That's my life. (laughs) I mean, you're, you're absolutely not right. The discrimination that sex workers face on social media is crazy. I mean, even I, and I'm pretty fucking careful about what I post. Like I'm 100% shadow banned and people have a hard time finding me and I'll get like lately I've noticed I've gotten really low engagements on my posts, even though my follower count has grown and I don't don't have 2 million followers, but I have 440, 400,000, like over 400,000. Um, and I'll, yeah, I'll get like, barely any engagement on my post and I'm like I know that you know people aren't seeing these and you know one can say oh well you know these are private companies Twitter and and Instagram and Facebook you know so they can make up whatever rules they want and it's like yeah but the way that society has changed now the way the internet has changed like social media is a huge part of our promotional tools and advertising and it's money like being able to post and promote your yourself and your content on these profiles directly affects your income so if they take that away from you then like how are sex workers supposed to make a living yeah it's super unfortunate too i mean it's cool like if you have rules that's fine whatever i agreed to it when i signed up but like make those rules apply for everyone like it's not fair like like kendall jenner can post like she's practically nude but just because she's not showing her vagina and nipples like it's okay like it's not it's not fair like you need to keep it fair all around if you're gonna have rules and what what's the point of rules if you're not gonna like make them apply to everyone so it's unfortunate and I just wish like I don't know I wish they were more fair about it and it sucks like nobody like if I post like a lifestyle photo or something of me doing something I'm passionate about like when I went skydiving like nobody cared nobody liked it but like if I'm practically naked like that gets all the likes I'm like that's cool like I understand I do porn like that's the life I chose but like come on people like at least make me feel like you give a crap when I do something I'm passionate about instead of just caring about my butt or my titties and like 
it just sucks, but that's the way that it is. You kind of have to like work with it. What are you passionate about? Like, what are some of the things in your life besides your job that make you happy? Um, we, (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I just, what the heck? I swear nobody calls me until I'm on a freaking podcast. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Animals. I love animals. I have my cat right here. I don't know if you can see him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, he's definitely made an appearance. Uh, everybody, it's funny doing these um doing these ep- these remote episodes at homes, people's pets always make an appearance. So I always like get to see people's cats and stuff like that. Yeah, they're always next to me too. I love them. I love them so much, but I don't know. I'm just so busy with work. It's hard to like do any other hobbies. So I think really it's like, what do I do outside of work? All I do is just like smoke weed and chill with my cats. Yeah. Yeah. No, I believe me. I understand. What do you, is there anything that you want to do? Like, do you see yourself, do you see like an end to your career and do you have something else that you want to do with your life or you just kind of, kind of roll with the punches and just see where life takes you? I feel like I mostly just roll with it and go with the flow, but I do see myself in the future. I really just want to take this money that I'm making now and turn it into something that like can provide for the rest of my life or put it into investments and stuff like that. Be smart with my money because I feel like a lot up until this point, I just have been spending my money on whatever I want. Like It feels good when you're working hard to just go out and buy yourself whatever you want or be able to do that. And I feel like I don't know. My family calls me Spendra because (laughs) like I have a problem with spending a lot. Um, And I don't know. I don't know where I get it, but I just, I like to buy myself things that I want. I like to have nice things and get whatever I want. I feel like I work hard for it, but I feel like now I'm 25. It's about time that I like start really trying to invest my money and put it in places that'll help me when I'm older. I just want to get, I guess like properties around places even just like for me if I want to get a property in Hawaii and go there for a couple months I want to be able to do that and I just really want to like build something where I'll be okay or I'm like 35 and I don't still have to keep doing porn you know I want to be smart with it um but I, I don't know I feel like at some point I'll start a family too and I would eventually like to go back to school for animal science I feel like I would love to have like an animal sanctuary or a place where like I just love exotic animals like red pandas and otters and like lately I've really been wanting a raccoon like I just don't know like I just love (laughs) I just want like random cool animals so I don't know maybe one day I'll be like an animal person yeah you know I will say like I'm 42 and I wish that I had saved more money when I was younger um I I do agree with the fact that you know you work really hard and yeah like you should be able to buy things that you know like I do the same thing like I, I I'm I'm more into saving money now especially because I have a kid but um you know you should reward yourself for the work that you do yeah. but saving money. I wish I had done that earlier because I probably would own a house by now if I had and I didn't. So it's a lot. Yeah. I feel like that's my next goal is like owning houses. I feel like that's the number one advice you could give anyone in this industry is like really save your money and plan. Cause if you don't, you know, you'll be like 25 or 30 years old still doing this. And like, you know, you just kind of want to set yourself up if that's like where you want to be in life or if you want to do porn forever, that's cool too. <laughs> Yeah, to be fair, I mean, you know, the MILF revolution, like you can be doing porn well into your 50s and still be doing great, but it's it's an exhausting job and it's, you know, it's hard on your body. Yeah, I feel like people don't really realize how hard it is. Nobody really understands the porn industry unless you're in it. And that's mm-hmm. something that I know. I feel like I have so many like friends with regular jobs or just like people that are just so curious about it and what it's like and surprised by it. It's super professional. Like it's super hard. And people think like, ah, you just got to have sex like for a living. Like that's fun. Like cool. But it's a lot more work. It hurts my back so bad to pose all day. And like, you really have to like 
suck in and like arch and hold it and like if you're shooting multiple times a week or even multiple times a month like it could be really hard like getting tested and having to get it now a COVID test 24 hours before each scene like at some points I thought my nose was gonna like deteriorate or something I was like this is just so much but I feel like it's definitely worth it it's something that if you're really like passionate about it then it can be a really great job that's like with any job, like if you're not into your job, like of course your job's going to suck and porn is no different. Like if you're not in it for the right reasons then it's not going to be good. But I feel like I literally say like born for porn. Like I really feel like I was born to do this because it just feels so right being in this industry. Yeah. And that's, and that's, that's great because, you know, like you said, it's, if it's not the right job for you, it's actually worse in a way because of the stigma that follows it, you know, because you I had this conversation with somebody the other day, like maybe you want to try to be a fucking accountant and then you find that you hate being an accountant, right? It's pretty easy for you to make a job switch to something else. You know, you say in an interview, Oh, what were you doing before this? Oh, I was an accountant, you know, like, Oh, okay, cool. But if you're like, you know, you're a porn star and then you want to go do something else. And we've seen so many cases of this where nurses were kicked out of schools, people lost their jobs because people find out that they did porn in their past. Yeah. Like it makes you so some kind of degenerate or criminal. And then yeah. like really hard to transition to something else. Yeah, I always say like the hardest part about the job is the way that society treats us and views us. Like we don't deserve love. Like we're never going to find love. Like we don't deserve respect from our parents or from anybody else. And I've been extremely lucky in the fact that my family is so supportive and so loving and loves me unconditionally. And I just think it's so funny that like trolls on the internet are like, Oh, your dad must be so proud. Your mom must be so proud. But like, really my parents tell me they're proud of me like quite a lot. Cause I'm just they say like, you're such a generous person. You're so kind hearting. Like I'll help anyone. Like now that I have money, like I'll help anyone that needs it. Like my friends, my family, and just really like caring. And I wish that society could see us more as like real people. Like you never understand what someone's going through or never know. So you could be just like spewing hate at someone and they could be having a really bad day. Or maybe their parents like disown them because they don't see why someone could love this job respect themselves like I feel like a lot of people are like you don't respect yourself you don't have morals and it's like I feel like that's very like up to the person like everybody has different morals everybody has different things that make them happy and want to do with their life so like who are you to judge like I think that doing porn is okay maybe you don't but like that's no reason to like hate me for it like I don't hate you for going to a nine to five job every day like it's just so weird to me but I just wish that society was like more accepting of us because y'all watch our porn like you all are watching it millions of people are watching it nobody it's not like nobody's watching it like you're consuming it so don't treat us like shit when we're like the ones giving that to you that entertainment yeah it's the same people that'll like jerk off to you with one hand you know and then like reject you with the other I mean it's so yeah I say that all um, the time yeah it's it's (laughs) <laughs> yeah, really fresh. That's great to hear that you have a supportive family because, you know, I, I've talked to quite a few girls and we've kind of, you know, asking them like, how do you keep like your head on your shoulders in this industry? And so many people have cited the fact that they have support from their family and that's kind of been everything for them. And I also have a very, I'm very close to my family and I have a supportive family. I mean, obviously they got me into this fucking industry. Mm-hmm. Um, But, uh, you know, and then I see a lot of other girls whose like families disown them because they get into this industry and then they just like have, don't have connections with people and it's so hard. So it literally breaks my heart for other people. I'm like, I am so grateful for my family, honestly, because it would be, I can't imagine them disowning me. Like I probably wouldn't stay in the industry very much. I probably wouldn't love my job as much. I mean, I feel like I still would have, but I probably would have been more ashamed. And like, just to have the support of my family and my friends and everyone around me, it just confirms to me that I am in the right job. I am doing what's best for me and like what makes me the happiest. So I wish that more people could see that. And everyone's always like, what if you had a daughter and she wanted to do this or whatever? I was like, I will support 
my child for whatever they want to do as long as like they're taking care of themselves and like they're just like good people I think it's more important to teach your kids not to hate on other people for their decisions rather than be like you shouldn't do this or you can't do this or I don't want you to do this because in reality I feel like that just makes you want to do it more (laughs) if someone's telling you no yeah no I think that's so true like give your children the freedom of choice but also give them the support and the love to help them make the decision that's right for them. And it sounds like this industry is right for you. Yeah. So what do you think is like the public's greatest misconception about porn stars? Um, I don't know. It's hard to tell. I don't know if it's just like trolls that like think that we're just like dirty or whatever, but I feel like we get tested like more than the average person. Like, yeah, I get it. Like we're sleeping with each other more and that we need to get tested. But I feel like a lot of regular people, like civilians, just feel so weird about getting tested and that it like means that you're dirty or whatever. I'm like, really, it just means that you're just like healthy and that you're really taking care of yourself and you're making sure that you're like contributing in a good way. You don't want to keep spreading STDs and stuff like that. So I feel like people just don't understand that we're very, very careful. Like we show each other our tests, we go over consent. We talk about what we do like and what we don't like. We have a safe word. There's normally someone on set that just like watches over and makes sure that everyone's happy. And you check in before you do your scene, you check in afterwards. They ask you if you did anything you didn't want to do, you know, like it's very, like very professional. I feel like people don't really understand that, that this is a real job. Like we pay taxes. We pay a lot of fucking taxes So it's like when people are like, go get a real job. I'm like, do you want to see my tax returns? Like, please tell the IRS that I don't have a real job because I would love to not have to pay taxes. That would be great. (laughs) God, that is so, so fucking true. (laughs) Please. And then um, my final question for you is what advice would you give to a new girl coming into the industry? Were there any mistakes that you made that you wish you could go back and change oh tons of them like a lot of times I just want to like set up something where girls can go and get advice starting in the industry I got in when I was 19 I was very naive and I won't say that I was like pressured to do things that I didn't want to do but I feel like I was more afraid to speak up and say no And I was in some situations where I didn't want to be in and instead of saying something I just felt like, I don't know. It was just, I didn't feel like speaking up. And I feel like it's very important for girls to know, like, you are in charge. Like these directors, they're like, you're working for them, but basically they're working for you. Like you're the star, like, don't be pressured to do anything you don't want to do. And you can say no, you can decide what you want to do with your career. Like, don't listen to other people. Like, like for me, like if I wanted to do IR for my third scene, I did it. Like I didn't listen to what other people said or anyone else's advice. And I feel like that's really important. I mean, if you're flying around a lot, save your flyer miles. That is something I missed out on. And I was flying so much my first few years and I didn't save any of the miles. Um, I think it's important to like secure, like once you find your stage name, secure those social medias secure those websites with the names like GoDaddy. It's not hard to just go and buy a website with your name. It's so cheap. But if somebody gets to it before you, they will withhold it and they will try and charge you so much to get it back. So it's like, I think it's important to really brand yourself and save those things in case you ever want to like build a website or do something like that. Yeah, I feel like that's pretty much it. I learned a lot of mistakes <laughs> you learn when you go through them, but I feel like I could save a lot of girls in the future um, from going through those same mistakes. Yeah. That's some actually, that's some really practical, the flyer miles thing. No one's ever brought that up before. That is some like very <laughs> practical advice. Fast. And it's like my really smart. <laughs> like I could be in the like, whatever the little like club in the airport where you go in with like the people that fly more I could have been getting upgrades I could have been getting free trips like I really slept on that and yeah. uh, I just <laughs> I really wish I didn't <laughs> <laughs> Well Kendra thank you so much for joining us it was such a pleasure to talk to you again Thank you for having um me. 
Can you tell everybody where they can find you online, including where they can uh, subscribe to your online magazine? Yeah, so this is always a process. I got a lot of things, but um, you can follow my new Instagram. It's the real Kendra Sunderland, like D-A, real Kendra Sunderland. That one actually got verified. I don't know how, but it is, so don't be fooled. Uh, Twitter, KS Library Girl. I have a website where you can get a lot of my full-length videos that I produce, KendraCenterlandVIP.com. You can also buy, like, anything I've worn or, like, touched on there. I have some merch. Um, my OnlyFans is a cheap way to get content. It's OnlyFans.com slash KS Library Girl. Um, the magazine is SMDMagazine.com. We're going to be working on the second issue. I'm really excited for it. Um, you can always find BTS on my OnlyFans. And, yeah, you can buy my Fleshlight. Go have fun with that. I don't know. There's always so much stuff <laughs> all over the place. Yeah, it definitely sounds like you've got the marketing thing down. It's a lot. I've built, like, I feel like I've built a really nice brand. I've built, my, my name's my name. So it's like, it's me. I've built all these things for myself over the years. And I'm really proud of like all the work that I've put into it. So I try and give my fans a lot of different things that they can have. And you should be proud. You've done, uh, you've done incredibly well. And um, I look forward to shooting more of you in the future. Yes. And thank you again for joining us. Thank you. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and Twitter, even though I'm shadow banned. Like we said before, I am on there. <laughs> and uh, you can support this podcast by going to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. And you can join my Not Safe for Work membership site at hollyrandall.com. Thank you guys so much for joining us and we will see you next week. Blue Chew is making waves. Blue Chew tablets are made in the USA and they prepare and ship directly to you. You can try it for free. Just pay $5 in shipping by going to bluechew.com and entering code HOLLY to get your first month's subscription.